So next question, the title that we chose for you was Duke of Discoveries. For obvious reason, you've made a lot of discoveries lately. Um, so the question is, let's talk about that. How many have you done? Which one is your favorite? Well, there, uh, right now officially there's only like two, but like in the emails of the guy who approves them, I have like 15. Mm. So. Unofficially. Yes, unofficially. The, there's this one French guy, his name is Pascal Ledoux, who has a very keen eye and he approves your discovery or rejects it. Oh so my. He's, he's very hard to uh, get approval from because he's very discerning, but also he's on vacation until like the oh. 17th. Um, yes, mais someone, oui, it is the summer of vacances. Someone in, um, in our Discord, uh, Discord chat discovered, well, he thinks he discovered something um, near the galaxy and he sent an email to Pascal, uh, but haven't, uh, hasn't heard back. So I'm guessing because it's on vacation, yeah. Good to know. Yeah, it's, it's hard to uh, get in his good graces, so to speak, or to get him to reply quickly. It could be months. Yeah. Um, three months it's it's a huge bottleneck with images but it kind of like helps mediate or moderate the process for all the amateurs in kind of a way that's fair yeah so i, I kind of like it but the way uh i got into it is i started doing mosaics a bunch and i saw we all know marcel drexler his images on astrobin and i was just thinking you know there's probably something in these mosaics somewhere and i started sending him data and um, I sent him my Volpecula and uh, Mosaic, the big nine panel one. Mm -hmm. And that helped him confirm like three or four discoveries. So he invited me to participate in some projects. And one of the projects was the M31 arc, which of course was You're pretty insane. Less than M31. Yeah, it's, it's the best. But after I got involved with that, I was like, if there's a thing right next to Andromeda, then there's probably stuff everywhere and nobody has looked, so we might as well just go looking at random spots and then... Literally, the sky is yours. But I would assume, as everybody else was, would on online that's watching, because we're not all dummies, not to send every single thing to this guy, just something that is, like, worth looking at, right? How, how yes. do you tell? It's, that's honestly one of the hardest parts. I'm pretty sure I annoy the heck out of him. I send him so many things, and a lot of the things I've sent are not of good quality. I try to, like, update and tell him, like, disregard this. I ended up finding out later on. <laughs> the uh, Which is you, kind, honestly, because following up, you're just like, let it go and be like, nope, there was nothing there. But you could have been, like, saving him the time. That's actually very kind. Yeah, he could have blocked you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Emailing things to Marcel is a good idea. Usually Marcel has been like super helpful to everyone as like a figurehead in the community for just telling you if your thing is bad or not. And he's kind of been my mentor for <clears throat> figuring out if things are worth looking at or not. Like I used to send him a bunch of lens flares. I've imaged lens flares for like 15 hours at a time uh -huh. because I thought there was something, but they were really nothing. That's interesting. Um, but you kind of have to learn a bit about, um, astrophysics a little bit how to navigate the catalogs and how to get like a theory for why your thing is there if you can get a good theory as to why a thing exists like if you have a white dwarf obviously that's like a smoking gun that's something that pascal can work with super easily like he doesn't have to dig but for other things that have higher complexity or maybe unknown origin then it's questionable whether or not Pascal will approve, and it's a whole ordeal. It's a struggle, but... Oh my. So, so just so we don't skip any questions and uh, later on, uh, let's go over those two here. What are some tips to discover stuff, Bray, from Brody Mink 45 Um, tips. I don't want to give away too many secrets, but... <laughs> That's think... okay. You know what? Fair. Fair. <laughs> the method to my madness is... Uh, pretty low intelligence. Like, I don't know that much about astrophysics. I'm literally just doing O3 surveys. So mm -hmm. that's that's all I'm doing. Um, I know you guys probably saw Nico's discovery, that reflection. Yeah. Yes, was. beautiful, <clears throat> love that. Yeah, so stuff like that is pretty cool. Um, my recommendation would just be to keep a keen eye out in your images, like just comb over everything in a fine way and have an open mind. Um, as to whether or not something is known or not. 
I mean, even if it is, you have a chance to learn something new in a photo or something interesting. And potentially something new may exist in anyone's photos. Like my first Nebula Falls Object one, someone already shot it like six months prior to me shooting it. Mm. And they posted a photo with the telescope live and it's like very plainly there. But, you know, if they had taken, yeah, if they took a keen eye and um, like followed up on some things, then they would have noticed it. But yeah, it's just about keeping an open mind and looking for smudges and crazy things. Well, that's all on you, Antoine, because I well, had that ice. We, we took a picture of M37 about six months ago, and there was a nebula within it, but that was discovered, like, I think, seven months prior. So I was like, no! There was, like, I think one or two pictures online of that. But it was, it was beat, a close call, yeah. You can't beat yourself up about it. Yeah. Also, I think that's also something <clears throat> fair to say. I don't know if you want to chime in on that, Bray, is, like, don't beat yourself up about it if you were just there and <clears throat> then you didn't see it. You know, I'm sure that guy that was like, oh, man, fall one could have been mine. You know, would have, <laughs> just feeling the same way. Yeah, there's a if you like go through the process to actually look for something, you'll do a lot of beating yourself up. I mean, it's inevitable. There will be a lot of near misses, a lot yeah. of uh, especially with uh, Marcel and Xavier's objects. Like if you go looking for things in like a consistent way, mm -hmm. like Honestly, 80% of the time you think you found something new, it's one of their things because mm -hmm. they've just been so yeah, expensive. They're going crazy. Like on Astro Base, non stop discoveries and discoveries and discoveries. It's insane. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Brian asks, what does he actually do to confirm or deny these objects? I'm guessing there is a scientific process or is it just a kind of comparing catalogs? Do you know? Yeah. So it's. Um, it's comparing or cross-referencing a couple catalogs. There's one, <clears throat> well, there's a couple different databases. There's the hash, which is, um, I forget what it stands for, but it's a planetary nebula database. Mm. That's one place you go to check to see if something's new or not. You can also go to the CDS uh, Straussberg catalog website. Um, also gives you a good idea of what's going on. If you find something new and it doesn't show up in either of those places, then you're kind of like, oh, maybe I need to start digging a bit more. There's this other thing. Uh, there's a catalog, a UK catalog of galactic supernova remnants that has about 300 known galactic supernova remnants. Also important to cross-reference because... I love the way you say remnants, by the way. Remnants, yeah. <laughs> there, there is a lot of uh, unphotographed but known galactic supernova remnants, so it's always important to check that. That's like my one weak spot is I don't, I didn't know about the list of supernova rem remnants until like two weeks ago. So I've just been sending off known supernova remnants to Pascal for no reason. So there's that. But once you get past all those things, then you dig through the Vizier catalogs and you look for like a giveaway star, like a, a white dwarf, a hot sub dwarf type star. And if you have a giveaway star and your object and it doesn't show up anywhere, then you send it to Pascal and say, please approve. <laughs> and then you wait short. yeah, three to four months, and then maybe he says, no, not good enough. And then... <laughs> With his French accent. Not yes, good. yes. <laughs> hey, Nico is here. Welcome, Nico, and congrats, yes, on your uh, discovery. Yeah, it's your really hundred. awesome. Beautiful. Love the name. I just... Beautiful. I don't know how you do it. Just, mm, just so good. We'll have to try imaging it, too, and it'll be fun. So I hope you guys all loved uh, digging into Bray's brain for that a little bit. Everyone's, like, losing their collective minds right now. They're like, ah! And now they're going to run into all those catalogs, so... And one last thing uh, about this subject. Damien says, To be fair, so much stuff is discovered by chance. The more you are out imaging, the more chance you have. I agree, but at the same time, if you take your time using specific filters like O3, for example, and do mm -hmm. surveys like Bray's doing, you have, of course, much more chance to find something. It's not just luck, I think. It's just... Uh, so, good luck. Yeah. Things pop out of nowhere all the time. Uh, space is uh, the vast reaches. You don't know what's happening out there. 